Hello, N4H&H &H here with the Yaesu FTDX 5000 MP, and that will be the subject of this video. I'm going to be focusing on the 10 meter band and specifically uh, 10 meter FM. So right now I'm in VFO mode and I can use band stacking. So, you know, 40 meters, 10 meters. And if I tap again, I'm cycling through my band stacks. So you'll see I have a, a CW frequency that's popular for soda. Some it's on the air, and then I have uh, 28.4, the calling frequency for the 10 meter band sideband, USB. And then I have 29.6, which is the uh, upper portion FM of the band, and it is the simplex calling frequency, 29.6 FM. And so then um, I just cycle back through there. Now, I have other 10 meter frequencies programmed in memory, and if you saw the video I released recently, about groups and memories, accessing groups and memories with the FTDX 5000, you will recall that, okay, so to switch over to memory mode, I tap the V slash M button here. <clears throat> You'll see an indication here, it's on um, group three. And um, let me switch this. You long press this and this changes groups. And there's group five, which is the 60 meter band that is programmed in there from Yesu. So group three is where I've programmed. Now I, I use the RT system software to, no, I actually programmed this manually the first time. And then I used the RT system software to back it up. And then I made some changes here and there uh, over the past couple of years. But uh, it is a little bit easier to program this with the RT system software, but that's true with any radio. Um, this one's not bad to program manually, though. Just follow the instructions in your manual. It works. But what I've done here is I've got a group that has the, the 10 meter FM frequencies. And for that matter, you're going to see it has uh, six meters as well. <clears throat> so what I do, and again, this part was covered in that pr recent video, uh, accessing groups and memories. I'm going to long press this button here in the middle over the top of this VFOB knob. And now when I rotate VFOB, I'm cycling through that memory bank, as you see here, it goes to six meters and some frequencies that I put in there, and it just starts over. So 29.600 is the FM calling frequency, and you would want to set that at simplex. 29.620 is a popular 10 meter repeater. Um, <clears throat> there's one in New York that is very, very strong, and it's linked up to other repeaters, on even on other bands, two meters um, at least. I know two meters, maybe six meters and, and 70 centimeters. Uh, it's a network of repeaters, but um, when the 10 meter band is open um, up here in this FM portion, that repeater comes in very, very strong. I was hearing it earlier in my mobile and it was coming in 40 over. So uh, 29.620, 640, 660, and 680, very popular repeater frequencies. Now the tone may vary. Yes, you will need, an, uh, need to use a minus offset most of the time. And, uh, well, I've never heard of a 10 meter repeater with a plus offset, but maybe there's one out there and you'll need to use a tone and not all of them use a hundred Hertz tone, but that is very popular tone for these repeaters. So let's go back and take a look at 620. Now, one of the things about the 5,000 that you may or may not know, if you've not played around with a 10 meter, uh, repeater setup, then you may not know this, but Rather than having to go into this menu that you press down here by the VFO, you long press this button, it's AM, FM, it toggles back and forth, see here? Okay, so I'm in FM mode, now I'm gonna long press. Isn't that cool? A 13 year old radio, well not this one, but the design of this radio is 13 years old. I bought this one in the fall of, of uh, 2019. But, you know, 13 year old technology, the long press. So we're gonna long press and look in the OLED area, and you'll see that that repeater is using a minus offset toning code, and it goes away after a minute, so hang on a few seconds, in a to tone of 146.2. Now, if, if you need to change one, I'm gonna long press again. Once I get here, if I just tap, look at here, look at this area. It's recycling through the minus pl simplex or plus, minus simplex or plus. Now, I'm gonna leave it on minus and let it time out. You could also long press this to get out of that. Now I'll move up to the next one, 640. Um, oh, I got to get back into the mode where it's letting me, there we go, cycle through the memories. Now, 
uh, just tap that V slash M button and it'll put you back into the uh, memory cycling here if you've made those changes. Now, if you press it again, you're back on VFO mode. All right, so let me get back in here. You'll see it down here in this, there's little indicators right here in this green area. All right, so now I'm on 640. Let's see what it's set to. Okay, so minus encode 100 hertz tone. And there you can hear some action. I've actually heard several repeaters on that tonight. Um, one of them apparently doesn't require a tone <clears throat> and it's quite strong. Um, and so it'll cover up the other ones when somebody triggers it. Um, all right, so let's go and uh, let's look at 660. I believe that might be the frequency where there's there's a really, real good powerhouse of a repeater out of Dallas, Fort Worth. So I'm going to long press, and you'll see it's set for minus, tone encode, and 100. Now, that you can do tone squelch off or tone encode. All right, that's like a CTCSS tone, continuous tone coded squelch system. All right, so and that one uses a 100 hertz tone. Again, once you're in here, if you just tap that, you can cycle through the minus, plus, and simplex. But you won't... I've, I've never heard of a 10 meter repeater that wasn't a minus offset, just, just so you know. Like I said, maybe there's one out there. If there is, well, tell me, put it in the comment. All right, and then uh, 680. And long press, minus tone encode 100. And that, that is common. Again, if when in doubt, put in 100 for the tone. Uh, but, I, but I do know that uh, New York repeater, because I looked it up earlier, it is 146.2. Now, I've gotten into it before with a 100 hertz tone, so maybe that's a change. I was reading a while ago. I don't know if this is totally true. You know how the Internet is, but I was reading a while ago that uh, their original antenna was on the World Trade Center, and now they, it's on an AT&T tower up there. It is a powerhouse of a, of a repeater, though. When the band's open, I mean, here I am in Georgia, and it was 40 over to my mobile a while ago, and I was here in... <clears throat> excuse me, numerous QSOs. So uh, anyway, but for those of you with a 5,000, just wanted to give you a little rundown on that in case you haven't explored that part of the radio or in case the, the manual is not completely clear on that. But it, it is quite simply a long press of, of the FM AM button as long as you've got it in FM mode. And that's wh why it knows what to do with a long press here. Long press... Repeater minus, tone encode, and whatever tone the repeater requires. When in doubt, 100. All right, and you see it just times out and you're ready, and you can move over to the other frequencies. Yep, there's definitely some action. Trying different antennas. Vertical, ZS6BKW, off center fed dipole. I mean, there's some fading going on, but it looks like. It's between the vertical and the um, ZS6 BKW as far as the performance there. And I am, I am employing the squelch here. On these old radios like this, I see old, you know, 13-year-old technology. You have a separate squelch knob and you have an RF gain down here. Let me pan there where you can see. So the volume is here for receiver A. That's the volume for receiver B. Okay, and then the ring here is RF gain. And then this knob here in the middle here, these are noise blankers for receiver A and B. And then that outer ring is squelch. So it's nice that you have a separate squelch from RF gain. Now, I will say I was running mobile today, you know, with my 891. And this isn't an 891 video, but I want to mention a, 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 a kudo here to Yesu. Uh, because they didn't even do this in the FTDX-10. When you go to FM and you operate in this area, you know, 29.6, 29.640 and all, when you go to that, um, the FT891 automatically turns the RF gain into a squelch, which is really cool. So, you don't, in other words, you don't have to go into the menu and decide whether you want your RF gain to either be squelch or RF gain. When you go to FM operation, FM mode, it automatically changes the RF gain knob on the FT891 to a squelch knob. It's not necessary on this radio because you already have a separate RF gain and squelch. So that's kind of cool too. I don't know why they didn't, you know, with, with the newer radios like the FTDX-10, um, you know, why they didn't just go ahead and do the same thing. When you go into FM, it automatically makes the RF gain become a squelch, but it does not. 
unless I miss something in the menu, and I'm pretty familiar with that radio. Okay, well, I hope you found this video helpful and informative. Um, again, I know this is going to be boring for those of you who have an FTDX-10 or an FT-891 or some other radio besides the FTDX-5000, but I still have viewers out there who contact me, who email me, who post comments, uh, and also members of the Patreon support team who have an FTDX-5000. Um, I don't plan on parting with this one anytime soon. It's still my favorite radio of all time. I'm just going to, you know, full disclosure there. And that's coming from somebody who's not necessarily in love with Yesu, okay? I've, I've said before, sometimes they really frustrate me. But they got a lot right with this radio. So uh, that's why you've seen it on the channel since, really, since the beginning. Uh, because it's my go-to radio. Okay, well, okay, admittedly, look over here. There's the FTDX-10 sitting there ready. Um, it hasn't been operated in a while. The last time I used it was for the FT8 videos. Um, but it is a fun radio. Don't get me wrong. I'm just more, uh, you know, I'm, I'm all about ergonomics, and I like the ergonomics of the bigger radio. And as far as performance, it's neck-to-neck -neck with the FTDX-10, and for that matter, the FTDX-101. All right, so again, I, I hope you found the video informative, and even if you don't have this particular radio, well, I hope you pick something up from the video, and I appreciate you watching it this far. Shout out to the uh, Patreon support team who bring these videos to you. Without their financial support, I wouldn't be able to afford to keep this channel going. I wouldn't be able to justify the time or the expense, uh, and their support each month offsets the expenses. Uh, enough to make me, you know, justify coming down here and doing these. So shout out to that Patreon support team. Thank you so much. And if you'd like to join that team, three levels of participation. I won't go into all the details, but there's associate, executive, and VIP. And uh, the associates can participate in our polls, technical discussions. The executives and VIPs have some additional perks. If you want to learn more about that, go to www.patreon.com forward slash n4hnh patreon.com forward slash n4hnh and uh, you know help at any level if you can that will help me keep the videos coming to you and it's a way to say thanks all right um do me another favor it won't cost you anything smash that thumbs up click that like button it, that's a big deal to youtube okay that's i can tell you it, it has to do with their search algorithm so it'll help the channel out if you'll do that and consider subscribing to the channel. If you do subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload the next video, which is generally one to two a week. One a week and sometimes two a week. And if there's some urgent news that I want to get out, I may do a third video in a week. Uh, so click, uh, 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 smash, click that notification bell so that you can uh, get notified when I do upload another video. And uh, well, finally, consider sharing this video. Um, Post it to a link, you know, to social media, send an email or text message to a friend that, that might would benefit from this information. I try to make as many of my videos as I can generic enough in a sense that you could apply the information to other rigs. This one was specific to the FT uh, DX5000 because of how its buttons work in relation to setting that repeater uh, the offset and the tone and such, but uh, most of the videos you can learn from and apply to other radios. So if you would, please share the video link. And uh, hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate you very, very much. 73 from n 4 h and H. I'm about to get to bed because I've got to get up at uh, uh, 3.50 a.m. to uh, head over to the Huntsville Ham Fest. 73, N4H&H, out.